Ladies and gentlemen, by focusing on Asia exclusively in the new edition of our quarterly global view, you may think that we just want to avoid commenting on the tangents in the banking sector of Western countries that were unfolding when preparing this publication. It is true that making forecasts in this environment is difficult, especially for central bank policies, as their ability to fight the still elevated inflationary pressure rests on financial market stability. While in principle different tools and facilities exist to address micro and macro problems in the economy, central banks will need to take into account that tensions in the banking sector will also tighten financing conditions through higher risk premium and lending standards already. What is also true is that Asia looks relatively calm compared to the volatility European and US markets currently experience. But even before, China and emerging markets were our favorite equity markets. As some Asian central banks have stopped hiking policy rates already, while inflation pressure is relatively well contained, their fixed income markets are looking attractive again. It is often overlooked that the Asia-Pacific region comprises 27% of global fixed income indices. Still, it was China's swift exit from its zero-Covid policy that let us decide to focus on Asia this time. Finally, we can say that the pandemic is now truly behind us globally and in this respect, life is becoming more normal again. Seeing how strong and long-lasting pent-up demand in particular for services there has been in Europe and the US, we also expect robust growth in China's services sector this year. With China dominating the MSCI Emerging Market Asia Equity Index with a weight of 43%, the potential for a rebound of this index after two years with negative returns is clear. Also other countries in Asia can be expected to benefit from this pent-up spending, in particular those that usually host a larger number of Chinese tourists. This would be mainly Thailand, Hong Kong and Malaysia, where tourism has been far below pre-pandemic levels so far. We are aware of the rising tensions between China and the US. In our view, this does not imply immediate decoupling of manufacturing activity, but it suggests a rising trend of foreign direct investment in the rest of emerging Asia. This has already started since the trade war in 2018 and is expected to increase further. Many countries in the region have focused their efforts in investing in infrastructure. This is good news for absorbing more foreign investment and for the growth outlook in the medium term. If you are interested in our views in detail and our roundtable discussion on where to invest in Asia now, please have a look at our new Global View publication. Thank you for your interest and have a pleasant week.